Joining me now is a UFC bantamweight fighter who makes his debut against Rob Font at the Ultimate Fighter 24 finale in Las Vegas on Saturday night. He is Matt Schnell. Matt, how's it going? Everything's great. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate you taking the time, especially this close to the fight. Now, first off, after being on Tough 24 earlier this summer and, and airing that show, um, how did you? How did this? short notice fight against Rob Ford actually come together. How did you find out initially just a week or so ago that you had the opportunity to fight at this finale against Font, uh, against Font on uh, on quite short notice? Well, actually, strangely enough, uh, the PR lady who, who I've been working with quite a bit for The Ultimate Fighter, she's the one who broke the news to me. She, she heard it through the grapevine, a rumor, and texted me and was like, oh, I'm so excited. And so I called her. I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, I just heard you. You're fighting Rob Font. And I was like, well, that's news to me. Uh, so I, th I think that was on Saturday when, when that happened, last Saturday. And, uh, yeah, so uh, it, it was still a couple days. I, th I think it was Sunday before it was actually official that, that it was happening. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it just fell into my lap. I always keep I always try to keep a dialogue with, with Sean and Mick and let them know that uh, I wanted in and, and I was willing to uh, – I was willing to fight up a weight class and, and do whatever it took to get my foot in the door, and uh, they they took me up on that. That's crazy. Um, So you didn't actually know. So they basically booked this fight and almost had it official without even telling you. Is that kind of how it... Well, no. I mean, obviously, I had to sign the bout agreement and to, to make it official. But, yeah, it was it was a story that was broken to me uh by by somebody that I didn't expect it to, you know, I, I didn't expect it to come from that person. So, I mean, it was in the making. My management, as soon as as soon as Alejandro Perez was announced that he was injured, my management started. And I didn't even I didn't even tell him to. But this is, you know, I've got great guys working for me, and they're on top of things. So as soon as the guy was uh, as soon as the guy was hurt, uh, it was announced. My management got on it, and he didn't even tell me because he didn't want me to get my hopes up or anything. Okay. So. It just kind of played out that way. So it wasn't totally out of the blue. It's not like they booked you to fight without telling anybody on your side of the party and said, oh, you're fighting this week. No, I don't. Away. Right. I don't think they can do that. <laughs> that that's <laughs> yeah, what I, I was wondering. I'm like, I, yeah, I'm not sure that's really how things are supposed to work. But it's good, of course, that you got yeah. the fight and uh, and got it sort of properly, so to speak. Um, Do you have any idea why, I mean, there there were a bunch of guys on Tough this past summer. Do you have any idea why you were the one to get this fight? What Were you the one willing to step up and wait and no one else was? Do you have any idea at all, even if it's just speculation, or do you really just have no idea why you got this fight and say why, why, no one, why someone else didn't? Well, you know, I, I try to make an impact doing anything, any, you know, when I went on the Ultimate Fighter, I didn't win and I didn't perform to the best of my ability, but I still left my mark. And these guys knew that I that I had value coming out of it. And and we heard that uh, the the day the show wrapped. Like, look, Danger, you got a good shot, buddy. You know, not all these guys are going to get a chance. Uh, some of them will get a shot maybe down the road a little bit after a couple fights. Uh, but but we think that you did well and uh, we like you. So we had an idea that uh, that I that I was in the mix for sure and. Uh, like I said, I, I just try to make a, I try to make an impact. I try to leave, I, I believe I'm genuine. And, uh, you know, I showed up to win that tournament. And even after I lost, I stayed, I stayed training and I stayed, you know, I, I think I showed that, uh, that I was committed and that I was uh, truly a guy that deserved to be in the UFC. So uh, it, it kept me in the mix that, for sure. You know, I, I, I can't say exactly what the reason is, but uh, pretty much that's, that's, speculation but uh we we had we had a good idea that i would get, i would get my shot are you concerned about fighting on short notice or is this exactly what you wanted oh you know i tell you what it's it's certainly been nerve-wracking we would all like a training camp and seven days notice six days notice is not exactly ideal uh, no matter what and uh it i've never taken a short notice fight my whole career so it uh it's been a bit nerve wracking, of course, and, and fight week's been crazy and uh it it's been up and down emotionally. But you know what? I've put in a seven year training camp getting ready for this thing. Ever since I started doing martial arts, this has been where I wanted to be. So, you know, what can you do? You take the shots that you get and uh 
opportunity looks a lot like hard work, I believe, and I've I've been putting in the work, and I'm ready to go. I'm going to go out there and give it hell, I promise you that. And no matter how it turns out, no, no matter what happens, I'm going in there to win. But you will never hear me make excuses. You'll never, you'll never hear me. I won't make some post about, oh, this was on seven days. I don't care. I'm a fighter, and I like my chance in a fist fight against anybody at any given time. I always stay in the gym. I always work. But, you know, obviously, like, we weren't, we weren't camping like we were getting ready for a fight. I wasn't doing my conditioning. I wasn't doing my road work. We, we were just kind of having fun in the gym. But I feel healthy. I feel good. Um, the weight I'm, I'm sitting at 138 right now and I'm, I'm eating, I'm eating pineapple. I'm good, you know, so whatever, whatever, let's go, let's fight. That's what I, that's what I'm here to do. Looking back, I, I know you can't control this. You can't control when, uh, you get a short notice call from, uh, from a, like a uh, older promotion that you used to fight for, say legacy. You can't control when you step up on short notice, when you don't, things like that. But looking back, are you a little, um, not frustrated, but maybe disappointed that you never have fought on short notice before just because you, you don't have that sense yet of what that feeling is like until you've made it to the UFC where you're fighting the best of the best, really, and you can't really go in there and make mistakes because you'll, you'll, it'll cost you where, um, as you love fighting on, on the, on the local scene, so to speak, not as many people are watching, the stakes aren't as high. It's still a fight, but are you, are you kind of getting back to my question? Are you a little disappointed, um, for lack of a better word, that you haven't fought on short notice before? Uh, my my whole career has been very calculated, and and I I feel like I've always put myself in the right positions, and I I haven't had to take short notice fights because, like I said, I leave a mark anywhere I go. Every everywhere I've ever fought, the guys have always wanted to bring me back. So it's never been a thing where where I couldn't find fights, and it was difficult to. To, to get matched up and this and that. Maybe towards the beginning of my pro career, we had a lot of guys backing out. And even uh, late in my amateur career, we couldn't find fights anywhere we went. Like, dudes didn't want to fight. So it was tough. But uh, I'm not disappointed at all. And I can't put energy into, into thinking that way. You know, I'm, I'm here to win this thing. I have no doubt in my abilities. Uh, I, I know I'm a pretty big underdog. And, you know, I, I, I honestly thrive in it. I, I appreciate it because it's it's not a very common thing where where I am the underdog. So, uh, you know, let's let's go. Like I said, shoot. Do you think fighting in the under the bright lights for the first time could be a bit of a bit of an issue, or do you think because you have been on tough recently, you're, you're kind of all past that, and because you're taking this fight on on a week's notice or so, you just can't really think about that. Is the bright lights going to be a problem for you? It will it take a little bit of time to get adjusted to that. Or will that not really be an issue? I, I I would have to say no. I I don't think it will be an issue. I've fought I fought big fights before. I've been on the Ultimate Fighter. Um, you know I, I know that the UFC jitters are real. I've felt them since being here. You know I've I've never been this nervous before before a fight. But I can tell you this: all the fights that I've been extremely nervous for, I've always performed very well because. You know what? You know what brings the best out of you better than than when you feel like you've got nothing to lose. You know, and I'm just gonna go out there, let it rip, and uh, pick up the pieces after they fall. You know, I, I'm I'm excited for the opportunity. I believe that I belong here, and uh, I have no doubt in my mind that I'm gonna go out and showcase my skills. Why do you feel like you have nothing to lose? You are the underdog, as you said earlier, but, I mean, if you do lose and, and, and don't get the win over Rob Font, maybe your your UFC career could already be online. they they probably give you another shot, but you never know with the UFC these days. Um, they're, they're cutting guys that probably shouldn't be cut sometimes. Why do you feel like you have literally nothing to lose? Whew. You know, I've, I, just, I just don't think that way. and I, I can't even... I've played this fight out a million times in my mind, and every time I do, I see me winning, and I, I just, I, I can't think that way. You know, I can't think about about what's next or if I lose this fight because you'll you'll create a self fulfilled prophecy that way, and I'm just not trying to do that. Uh, I do feel that I have nothing to lose. Rob Font's got to go out there and, me, and finish me in a minute. I'm a weight class below him. I took it on seven days notice. This is what he's thinking. I got to go out there and finish this guy quick, or, or I, I, you know, I'm not. I'm not, uh, I didn't perform well. Whereas me, I'm the underdog. Nobody's expecting much from me. Uh, they, they definitely don't expect me to win. So I just got to go out there and fight, worry about my performance, and the rest will take care of itself. 
I got a chance to to pick DJ's mind uh, the the other night, and you know, I, I told I straight up told him I was honest with him. Uh, I'm nervous, and and that's something I'll always be. Okay, I'm I'm always going to be honest. I'm always going to speak my mind exactly how I how I feel. And I told him I, I was I was nervous, and he looked at me. He was like, Hey, man, look. I mean, think about this. Whether you go out there and you win or you lose, are you going to get back to training? Are you going to be, you know, are you going to keep doing this anyways? Like, what, what does it matter? You know, go out there and worry about the way you perform. He's like, that's what I do. If I perform, I win. And he's right, you know. If I go out there and I have a great performance, I, I beat any man in the world. There's not, there's not a man on this planet that stands on two legs, that fights within the weight class above me or the weight class under me. If I go out there and have the performance that I know I can that I I know I can put together, I win the fight. No period. After taping the Ultimate Fighter earlier this summer, were you told by the UFC that you'd be given a spot no matter what? What was what is was a spot on the roster guaranteed to you? Um or were you kind of in the in the dark, not really knowing what would happen? No, nothing was ever promised. We, I mean I think everybody knows that about the UFC. Even if they, if even if a promise was made, it still may not come <laughs> to fruition. So uh, nothing was ever promised. We we were very much in the dark. Now, like I said, I kept dialogue with Mick and with with Sean and let them know. And I tried to say the right things and I tried to do the right things uh, um, afterwards, you know. And I I knew that I didn't perform to the best of my ability, and I I knew that it was a possibility that they didn't even really like me, you know, after the show. But uh, and I, I just stayed positive. I, I kept in the gym, and you know, I, I believed that my time would come. And I've put in a lot of work, and it's it's been a long time coming. I I belong. I promise. I deserve to be here, and uh, I, I just can't wait to prove it. Do you feel like this fight, stepping up on a week's notice, could have been your only chance of getting to the UFC within the not so distant future? No. No, I think I think my time would have come regardless. I just I I believe I'm one of the better guys. Uh, I, I'm a real fighter, you know. And I, there's a lot of guys who are great athletes and who fight well and who who are good at fighting. But I'm a fighter through and through. If uh, if I was alone in the deep dark woods and and something crazy happened, I, I promise you I'd bite down and fight. That's who I am. And uh, I I I believe in in that. You know, I believe that. Uh, because I am a true fighter and I'm a, I'm a hard-nosed guy, it, it's carried me through. Now, as I said, and as you said multiple times throughout this interview, you were on Tough 24 this past summer, which just recently stopped airing, of course, hence, of course, the finale being on Saturday. You made it past the opening round and uh, unfortunately lost in the quarterfinals. Overall, what was the experience like in the house? Because I know there's a lot of mixed reactions from Tough Vets. Some say they loved it, some say... Well, it, it wasn't the best experience far from it. To you, um, in your eyes, what was being in the house like? It was a great experience, and I, I benefited from being around an awesome cast. And we were all champions, and we were all guys who had been there before. So uh, for me, it, it was a good experience. I don't know if I would do it again. I missed my family. I missed my girlfriend. And that all played into it, you know. And honestly, like I said, I, I'll always be honest with you. And I just don't think a tournament format is is something that uh, you know is, is really good for me. I I like to I like to fight once. I like to prepare and mentally you know build up my mental fortitude to go out there and lay it all on the line for 15 minutes. And it's tough for me, especially with the weight cut and and everything. I mean the the tournament format it wasn't for me. I didn't wrestle either. I didn't come up wrestling, so I'm not used to that. Like compete. All right rest compete again rest compete again so and i'm not i'm not trying to make excuses for myself but i don't believe i'm built for a tournament straight up especially at 125 now if we were at 35 and i didn't have to worry about cutting weight and i was cool then you know that that's a different story but uh at 25 with the weight cut with all the variables it just it wasn't it wasn't a great format for me as a fighter and that's just me being honest Fair enough. Now, how did this actually all come together? You being a part of Tough, it being the tournament of champions, uh, determining who would fight Demetrius Johnson, the flyweight champion, next. Because I know it was a bit odd how they announced it, how the UFC announced this tournament format. Um, of course, with all the champions from from local organizations, because initially they announced tryouts for anybody, any flyweights, and then they basically recalled the the tryouts and and picked 
and, and, and obviously changed their minds and went with all the champions. When how how did they actually reach out to you? Did they reach out to the legacy and then did they kind of did legacy talk to you and say, Are you interested? You say yes. Did they go directly to you? How did this all kind of come together, you uh from from getting the first call to UFC to walking into the house for the first time? Uh, well, uh, prob- probably a little bit of all that took place. You know, the leg. You know, Mick is Mick Maynard is the owner was the owner of Legacy, right? And now he's the UFC matchmaker. So rest assured, like he's in the loop, and these guys are letting him know what's going on. So I think we heard about it, and you know, thought thought it was a good opportunity. And uh, I, you know, honestly, I didn't have any interest in doing it. Once they announced that it was for a potential title shot, I mean, how do you turn that down? You got to go, you got to bite down, you got to go get it. So, uh, but they picked the best guys. They picked the best guys. They went out, they found the best guys, the guys that they thought would be the most exciting. And, and you know, I was amongst those guys. So, uh, you know, that's, that's how it turned out. When you work hard, uh, at the time, I believed that I was the number one prospect in the country. And uh, I think even, even if you look back at the way we were seated, you could still argue that I was the number one prospect in the country, seated number six behind a bunch of foreigners, Tim Elliott and Demacio Page. Demacio Page and Tim Elliott aren't, aren't considered prospects. These guys have been there before. So I was the number one guy in the country before uh, they decided to do that show. So that's how it fell into place. Now, you said you weren't initially interested. You were a bit hesitant to go on the show at first, and then, of course, uh, getting the chance to to fight the pound-for-pound king, the flyweight champion, changed things. Were you, at first, hesitant to go on tough just because of the brutal weight cuts back-to-back, of course, week after week, um, or was there also something else? No, I mean, I've just always watched The Ultimate Fighter, and I've, I've just not been interested in it over the last few years. I felt that it kind of grew stale, um, but th- this was, this was a cool format. So, you know, I, I jumped in and, uh, the, the reservations I had about it were mostly because of, uh, people's past experiences that I knew about. And I knew that there was a weird contract that they were getting locked into for a while. On that, luckily, luckily they had, they had gotten rid of that by the time that this came around. But, uh, I don't know. I, I was just, I was never interested in, and I felt, and, and not only that, but I felt like I had done enough. You know, I, like I said, I felt like I was the number one guy in the country. So I was just like, why, why do I have to, like, I want to get in organically. I want to, I want to get my shot because I'm, I'm a great prospect. And that's kind of, that's kind of where I was at and, and why I was thinking like, man, screw the, like, I don't want to go off for six weeks and get trapped in a house with a bunch of dudes full of testosterone we all want to whip each other's asses and you know that, that's just not what i wanted to do but uh it was, it was a great experience and you you can't buy that type of exposure and that's what we knew and that that were that was the the positive things that we were telling ourselves when when i went into the house like okay a lot of good is going to come from this i can potentially cut everybody in the division in line and get a title shot like how amazing is that some poor kid from shreveport louisiana fighting for the UFC title. Yeah. Um it, it it of course would have been crazy. Um did do you know you say that you feel even before the show aired even before you were on the show that you feel you did enough to get the UFC to get the call to to the big leagues and whatnot. Do you have any idea why you didn't get the call until now and uh, having to go through tough. Why was that kind of required, so to speak? Do you have any idea at all, even if, as I said earlier, even if it's just speculation, why you hadn't been sort of called by the UFC until recently? Well, this, I believe that this has been in the works for, you know, the, the tough 24, they had come up with this idea. It had been in the works for probably a couple of months and they had me in mind. You know, I have been on a TV show before these guys knew that, that I could probably pull some viewers in and, and help the ratings. And I believe they made the show with guys like me and Tim Elliott and uh, Pantoja and, and uh, Kai Car of France. They, they, they made the show with us in mind, knowing that we were good personalities and that we would film well and that it, it would be a good season. And I think the season did turn out really well. I mean, I can't, I can't remember a, a better season of, of fights than than this one has there ever been a season 
on the Ultimate Fighter where the first round, every fight was a finish, and every fight was a dog fight too. So these guys are getting finished, but they're all close fights. And let's be honest, of all the first round fights, all of them could have gone either way. You know, and just because the guys got finished didn't necessarily mean that the guys that advanced were were way better. I mean, these fights could have gone either way. What a great job that the casting crew of the Ultimate Fighter did casting this season. And, uh, yeah, I mean, everything turned out well. So what can you do? Now, as the show aired recently over the past couple months, did you watch every single episode, even the ones after you had been eliminated? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I kept plugging it with social media, and I kept doing my best to, to get – to you know, to get people to tune in and watch because I was proud of it, whether or not I wanted or not. Like I was proud of all the guys and what they had done, and you know, I, I thought that we really put together a great season. And I, I don't think the ratings really, uh, really showed how, you know, how much of a great this should have been the, the most watched season of all time. If we're being honest, these this was the best cast there's ever been hands down and, and I'm not you know it's it's hard to compare to the early days because there was no talent in the UFC so they could literally they they made a show of the most talented guys out there and that nowadays everybody who's good is in the UFC except in the flyweight division because it's a shallow weight class because they don't sign a lot of guys to that weight class because it's a weight class that doesn't sell this was their way of trying to kickstart it so I'm not exa- I, I forgot the question you asked I'm sorry I'm just rabbit holing over here yeah, I, I forget it too. <laughs> um, as far you you mentioned that flyweight division, and everyone can agree with this, is one of the more shallow divisions. Obviously, it's probably a bit more, uh, a bit better than heavyweight, light heavyweight, but it, it's definitely one of the more shallow divisions out there. They don't sign a lot of new flyweights, and uh, and as you say, um, it, it simply doesn't sell, which is unfortunate because they're still on par with everyone else they're they're the quickest in the UFC they're they're great athletes um how much value do you think having tough 24 being and, and featuring flyweights how much value do you think that'll add um in the future to the division if any well the re- the real reason that the weight class doesn't say, and I'm not t- saying that the weight class is shallow because there's not good fighters there this this I mean the best fighters in the world are flyweights there's a reason DJ's ranked the number one pound for pound fighter. I mean, you have to be the best at that. You have to have an incredible skill set. You can't just be some big athlete who used to play football and can swing your right hand around. There's guys like that in the UFC who are white belts who just have big punching power and they've knocked guys out. But skill wise, if I was the same size as these guys, I would dust them. And I mean, straight up, and we're talking about pretty much Batman fighting Goku here, but I really feel that way. It, like the skill set is a hundred percent different. So I'm not saying the weight class is shallow in the sense of it's not talented. It is. It's shallow in the sense of how many flyweights are in the UFC. Name fifteen flyweights for me. You can't. You can't, and nobody in the world can. I don't care what what kind of UFC fan they are. Nobody can name fifteen UFC flyweights right now. Okay, and if you try, you're going to name me as one of them. So it, it's just it, – it's it's a weight class that doesn't sell because the common fan is dumb, to be honest. And and they see they, they see the weight and they're like, 125, I don't want to watch little munchkins fight, you know? And that's just such a silly way to think about it because these are, literally, and, these are yeah. literally the best guys in the world. The smallest guys are going to be the best guys. You have to have the best skill set. That We're talking about the best speed. The, the the best scrambles everything the flyweight division uh, offers it right but because the common fan doesn't want to see a small guy fight it's never going to sell and you need a guy that's going to transcend the weight class and I, I believe that I believe that I can help bring the weight class out of darkness now obviously this Saturday I'm fighting the bantamweight and that's what I have to worry about right now but you know we're gonna we're gonna go back down to flyweight I'm a flyweight and I believe that. You know, the the reason that the UFC likes me is because they know that I'm going to go out there and fight hard and do my thing. And uh, I really think that I really think that I can shake this weight class up and, and make people pay attention a little bit. Yeah, now you kind of answered my my next question. I was going to ask you about fighting up a weight class at Boundweight, asking is this a permanent move, but it sounds like you're, you're going right back down to flyweight. Um, did you or, or have you in the past week considered maybe staying at Boundweight just because you are a pretty large flyweight? 
I, I can sit here and tell you that I'm going back to flyweight, but if the boss man, if I go out there and whip Rob Font and, and the boss man says, you know what, Danger, we like you at Bantamweight, well, I'm going to stay at Bantamweight then, you know. So uh, I, I believe I'm a flyweight. Uh, I'm a true flyweight. It's it, The weight cut's never been easy, but I'm not I'm not out here weighing out every morsel of food I eat. I'm not – my my lifestyle isn't suffering because I'm fighting – that fly weight. I'm still living life. I'm still eating. Everything's good. I'm not cutting my carbs out months and months in advance or anything of the sort. So, uh, I believe I'm a fly weight, but I feel good this week. And, and, you know, I'm undefeated as a professional at 135. I went five and one as a, as an amateur at 135. Uh, I've, I won two golden glove titles at 141. So this is, I'm capable. I'm, I'm a fighter and I'm capable of fighting and like I said earlier, I like my chance in a fist fight. Whether we're fighting at 25, 35, 45, I, I, I think I can fight. And, uh, you know, it. like I said, if the boss man tells me that they want to keep me at 35, well, then that's what I'm going to do. But uh, for me, for right now, if you're, if you're asking me, I think I'm a flyweight. Okay, sounds good. Um, how much have you had to cut to make the bandweight limit of one thirty five? Mm. I'll rehydrate back to one fifty. Is is one fifty about what you walk around at, or a bit more than that? Uh, I can get heavier than that, but one fifty is about right. When I'm in shape, I'm 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 in. You know, I'll break to forty four. You know, when I'm ready for a flyweight fight, and I'm in shape. I'm walking at like one forty four. When I got the call, I went and I stepped on the scale, and I was like one forty seven. And that was with a belly full of food. So it's, uh, I'm big enough to fight at, at Bantamweight. And we'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll see this Saturday. It'll be a good, a good you know, sign of because of, Ralph Font's not, he used to fight at 45. He's probably a bigger 35er. And when we get in there, we'll see. We'll see who the bigger man is. I'm sure he'll be, he'll be a little bigger, but it's not going to be what people think it is. He's not, he's not going to tower over me. We're the same height. He, I mean, our dimensions are very, very close. Now, we're, of course, just about 12 hours or so, maybe even less than that, uh, from the early wanes tomorrow morning. I imagine you're feeling right now, just 12 hours out from the wanes, the best you've ever felt in your pro career just because you, you have 10 less pounds to cut? Well, yeah, absolutely. And I've fought at 35 before, but obvious, honestly, in the past, when I fought at 35, they were still hard cuts. Like, I've had hard cuts to 35. And this just wasn't, it hasn't been one because... I was coming off the Ultimate Fighter, and I was I was in the gym. You know, like I said earlier before, I, I train year round. So, um, it, it but but it's been nerve wracking for sure, for sure. It's been nerve wracking, but I train year round. I'm ready to go, and and I feel good. You know, the the weight class has been great, and the the weight's just kind of falling off me. I've off more than anything, but uh, I'm I'm light, and I feel fine. I feel great. Now, it'll be interesting to get your take on this once you're back at 125 and once the cut uh, is a bit more and a bit tough, but is this the first time you will be partaking in early weigh-ins in your career? And either way, if, even if it is, even if it's not, um, what are your thoughts on the whole early weigh-in process? Oh, I love the early weigh-ins. It's amazing, and it makes so much more sense. Uh, I, I, I think I think big changes are coming, though. The, the, the whole weight-cutting thing as a whole it needs to be completely overhauled and and they i think i think changes are coming for sure uh now when we were on the ultimate fighter we got to weigh in at noon so that was pretty much a, an early weigh in and then we would fight at around okay. four so you know similar to what's going on i, I think i'm gonna have an extra four hours because we actually get to weigh in at eight it starts at eight it ends at ten so we'll ha i'll have a good uh a good window there to to uh, step on the scale, but yeah, I mean it's exciting. I'm I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna go down right at 8 a.m. Jump on the scale and start, you know, hydrating and feeling good about things. And I'm I'm sure Rob will do the same thing. Why not take advantage of the absolute most time you can you can rehydrate and put it back. You know, you might as well. Now I want to get a pick from you for the uh, for this weekend's Tough 24 main event: Demetrius Johnson versus Tim Elliott. Of course, you know both guys fairly well. Johnson was a guy you were preparing to possibly fight um, at this event, uh, had you have won, and, and Tim Milliot is a former opponent of yours. He, of course, uh, beats you in the quarterfinals. What are your thoughts on the matchup? I mean, Elliot is a major underdog. It would be quite 
Uh, quite the upset, maybe the biggest in history, even in UFC history, if he gets the job done. Uh, DJ, as I said, obviously favored, but just kind of give me your take on the matchup. How big of a chance do you do you give Elliot to, to win flyweight gold on Saturday? It's a fist fight, and Tim's, Tim's a strange, awkward style to prepare for. I think DJ is as tough as they come, and he can... Uh, he, he's got it figured out better than anybody at this point. Like this guy's got nine title defenses. He's fought in eleven title fights. He's he's been here so many times. Like he's as, he's cool as a cucumber around here. I can like when I see him walking around, I, I almost like pull try try to pull a little bit from him because he's so cool and calm and relaxed, and it's it's almost refreshing to see. But uh, as for my pick, I'm I'm gonna pick Tim Elliott. I'm I'm gonna because I think the guy can get it done and. Everybody, they get in this mindset that these guys are invincible, and I think DJ's great. He might be one of the best ever, but we've seen the greats fall before, and if anybody can get it done, Tim Elliott can. And, uh, yeah, I'm I'm picking the upset because I know DJ is a man, and he's not invincible. And if Tim gets his hands around his neck and and is able to get a good bite, guess what? DJ's going to tap too. Man, bold pick. Uh, I I like it. I I like it. it. Again, it's a... It's a tough fight for Tim Elliott, but I, I kind of agree with you in the sense that if anyone can get the job done and pull off an, a crazy sort of upset, it is probably Tim Elliott just because he his style is so funky. Um, so I would be shocked if he wins. I, I I will have to disagree with you and go with the champion, but as you said, no one is invincible. This is MMA. We've seen a lot of crazy stuff happen over the years, but particularly in 2016, this year's just been full of crazy stories. Um, upsets as well. I mean, Ronda Rousey lost last year. After that happened, anything can happen, really. So, I mean, I would be surprised, but as I said, anything is possible. Um, I think that is about it. We'll end with a prediction for this fight. Matt Schnell versus Rob Font. How do you get the job done on Saturday? Yeah, Rob's a great fighter, and I think we match up well stylistically. I think it's going to be an exciting fight. The fans are the ones who are going to come out the winners. But, uh, you know, I, I will have a speed advantage. And like I said earlier, I, every time I play it out in my mind, I win. I believe in myself wholeheartedly. I see me going out there and us testing it out on the feet and, and Rob uh, Rob feeling that I do have the speed advantage. And he, I think he's used to being the better athlete in there, and I do not think he'll be the better athlete Saturday night. So I think he feels that I'm that I'm fast, and he shoots at me from across the cage, and I take his neck. Awesome, Matt. Really appreciate you taking time this evening. Before I let you go, just let my audience know where they can check you out on social media, and if there's anyone you would like to thank or give a shout-out to, this is your time. I just want to thank all the people who've always supported me. There's been a lot of guys who who have stuck around and a lot of great fans, and uh, thank you all. Continue to support me. I'm going to go out there and lay it all on the line. American Top Team, uh, anybody who's put time and effort into me, it it has been appreciated, and, and it's all led to this point uh social media is at danger underscore cage and i'm now verified so you'll see that little blue check mark and that's the one so follow me